in the last stream, we were working towards getting this item right here, the Scarab from the Atum mod. And at the very end of the last stream, we set up this portal right here to the Atum Dimension. Now, the whole reason for us going to the Atum Dimension is because we need to get ourselves this guy right here, the Pharaoh Heart, which you can get by killing a Pharaoh, which is a fairly strong boss that spawns at the base of certain pyramids inside the Atum Dimension. So I think we can head through to the Dimension because we can come right back. It's not like the end where you have to uh, fight the boss before you can come back. So I can give you a quick uh, peek as to what's available in here. But before we actually try and find a pyramid and fight the Pharaoh, I think we are going to want to invest in better tools, better armor, and just a better way of, of fighting in general. So this is the Atum Dimension. It's, uh, it's very sandy. We're currently in a, a Sandy Hills biome. There are bad guys right out of the gate who are interested in uh, in ending my life here. So I'm very much so not going to leave the uh, the confines of the portal just yet. It's also extremely dusty. It definitely wasn't this dusty the last time that I was in this dimension. So someone in the Twitch chat has pointed out that if you turn fog off, it does look significantly uh, more open here in the Atom Dimension, and you can kind of see what's, uh, what's going on here. But uh, for now, we're going to head back, because what I want to work on in today's stream is I want to work on these top four quests here the fusion reactor or sorry the fusion reactor followed by this ingot right here followed by the end cake and followed by the dragon egg the reason for that as i've mentioned previously is that i think before we start fighting uh, the pharaoh the spirit guardian and the gaia we're going to want to have the best possible armor that we can get and to the best of my knowledge the best armor that we can get is the tire armor here uh, just after the draco arcanus armor uh, this stuff gives you plus 12 armor and plus 5 armor toughness. Uh, to get this, we do need quite a few of these golden dragon scales, which, as I mentioned before, do require regular dragon scales, which we get from dragon heads, which of course we find in the end, which is why we have to go through this top quest line here. So, the fusion reactor. This is the first thing that we're going to look to make, and it's actually a little bit more difficult than the fusion reactor, and if you watched any of the previous streams, you'll know the fusion reactor took quite a while to make in and of itself. So I have done a little bit of work between streams to hopefully make getting the fusion reactor a little easier. So to make it, we need one fusion controller, three fusion cores, and 98 fusion casing. Much like with the fusion reactor, it's built in the exact same way, by the way, it's just a big uh, cube with the controller on the front, much like this. The fusion controller also requires fusion casing, so that takes the total amount of fusion casing required up to 100. Uh, but then unlike the fusion reactor, the fusion core also requires fusion casing. So we need an extra six on top of that. And because you make these in sets of four, that means in total we need 108 fusion casing, which means we need 108 neodymium, 108 tungsten, and then 27 volcano cores. The neodymium here is actually by far the easier of the two ingots to make. Neodymium, we can make, of course, by getting the neodymium element and putting that into our chemical combiner. And neodymium we can get from a few places, but most importantly, you can get 16 neodymium guaranteed from one ender pearl. So as long as we have 108 ender pearls, we should be good to go. And as luck would have it, uh, we do have 180 ender pearls and should be able to get all of the neodymium that we need fairly easily. Now, the tungsten, on the other hand, is going to prove much more difficult because the way that we get tungsten is once again through the tungsten element. And the way that we get the tungsten element is in the chemical dissolver with either cobblestone, regular stone, tungsten ingots, which we can't do, or iron ore. And if I do a quick shrinking of my GUI scale here, and we look once again, because the uh, the percentages are kind of cut off a little bit, if we look at the percentage for cobblestone, you'll see that the odds of getting tungsten from one piece of cobblestone, 0.14%, which is not particularly high <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, and means that if we wanted to get, and bear in mind, if we're going to get 108 tungsten, that means we need 1,600 tungsten element. So trying to get 1,600 tungsten element from cobblestone would require approximately 1.1 million cobblestone. And as of right now, we have a grand total of 283 cobblestone, so we're a little far away from being able to do it with regular cobblestone. The situation with regular stone is a little bit better, but still pretty bad. The odds here are 1.91% which means approximately one in every 50 stone will get you one tungsten. But again, if we need 1,600 tungsten, that means we're going to need about 80,000 stone 
in order to get that to work. So I also don't think that's really a good way of us going about this. And so that leaves us with but one option left, and that option is Iron Ore, which does have by far the best percentage chance. Uh, this one is guaranteed to give you two tungsten per Iron Ore. So for this, if we wanted to get uh, 1,600 tungsten, we would need 800 Iron Ore. Up until now, we've been getting our Iron Ore through the Atomic Reshaper, and although we could look at getting it, for example, through the Orchid, I do think that this is still going to be the best way for us to do this. So that would mean that if you got iron every single time through the reshaper, uh, you would need 800 stone. Now, thankfully, iron, I believe, is the most likely outcome from the reshaper here. You don't just get iron, uh, but the chance of getting iron is 40%, uh, which means if we're going to get 800 iron, we're probably going to have to put in 2,000 stone uh, because 40% of 2,000 is 800. So if we put in 2,000 stone, we'd expect to get approximately 800 iron back. And if we're going to turn 2,000 stone into ores, we're going to need 200 primordium because each primordium uh, gives you 100 primordium units in the atomic reshaper. So that's where we're going to start today. We have to get 200 primordium. Now to do that, we of course need uh, this guy right here, the primordialis reactor. And much like we did earlier in the series, we have to put in preferably nine different food items or nine different seeds in order to maximize the amount of primordium that we get. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our primordialis reactor. We're also going to grab our energy on error heater. And we're going to take both of these over to our storage drawers over by the farming area. And this leads us to the first of many things I've done between streams. And that is I've added broccoli seeds to the farm up here to give us extra resources to put in the uh, primordialis reactor. So by adding broccoli seeds, I've added both broccoli and broccoli seeds to the storage drawn network down here. So if we were to put down the energy on our heater and the primordialis reactor in these nine slots, we can now put carrots, which I have temporarily disabled. So they're not being turned into uh, charcoal anymore for the Batania setup, because again, we want as many different types of uh, food items to put in the reactor. So right now we have carrots, we have potatoes, we have beets, we have wheat, we have melon, which we can also craft into melon seeds. We have normie seeds, we have regular seeds, we have broccoli, and we have broccoli seeds. Combined, that should give us nine items to put in the primordialis reactor, which should hopefully make getting the 200 primordium that we're going to need fairly easy. Now, previously, the way that I did this is I grabbed all of the uh, food items manually and placed them all into the reactor. And while that does work, it is pretty slow and also incredibly tedious. And so what we can do instead here is if we get a um, an item interface, which we might actually already have, let me quickly check. We do not, we have energy interfaces, but we can get more item interfaces nice and easily. And then we also grab an item importer. I think what we should be able to do and let me just quickly throw one of those back in there, is we should be able to extract all of the uh, items we're going to use directly from the draw controller over and into the Primordialis Reactor. So if we do this and this, and then just to uh, kind of get this going, if I put one of each seed, or one of each item, I should say, in here, and we are going to craft, of course, one of those melons into melon seeds, what we should see happen is we should see the cable that we're about to put down move items into these slots faster than they're used up. So if I were to do something like this. Oh, and we do have to put a variable card in, of course. Let me get one of those real quick. That has to go into the uh, importer. So it's import everything. Uh, at this point in time, we're not looking to import any specific items. We're just importing everything that is on the other side of that importer. And in this case, that's everything that's connected to the draw controller, which of course is everything here. So if we put a variable card right there, that should fill all these up. And it does, everything apart from melon seeds. And so now, as soon as we start putting energy on into the aero heater, and as soon as we start you know, increasing the temperature and activating the primordialis reactor, these numbers are gonna slowly but surely go down, but then should be instantly refilled from this draw controller. So the only thing that we have left to do here is to grab about half of our melons, craft those into melon seeds and add those to a new draw, at which point we can go ahead and start putting the energy on dust into the energy on error heater and we should be good to go. Okay, so the Twitch chat has pointed out actually that we don't need to use melon seeds here because we do have uh, broccoli seeds 
and those will do just fine. Without melon seeds, we actually already have uh, nine here, which is my mistake. Uh, we are a little low on carrots. We only have 800 as opposed to the, the few thousand of everything else. We're also fairly low on regular seeds. However, we can, of course, craft uh, our regular wheat down into more seeds if we need them. But I think for now, over 800 here should be a good start. We'll see how much primordium that gets us. We're also going to want to put down an item extraction pipe and a regular pipe to actually pull out all of the uh, primordium. But to get this show going, let's throw in our energy on dust here and see if this uh, does indeed work. Okay, so this is working. Uh, primordium is being produced. Uh, based on some quick numbers here, it's going to take about half an hour for us to get the uh, 200 primordium. That is fine. While we wait for that to do its thing, I would like to invest in an item that we have seen before, and in fact, an item that we might actually already have from uh, some of the other people playing on the server, but I would like to invest in my very own broom. So if we take a look in the Origins of Darkness book here, and uh, if you want to get to the broom page, by the way, uh, from the main page, which is somewhat, the, the book's a little difficult to navigate sometimes, but from the homepage here, you can go to the index and then just look for broom, which is right here. Brooms are typically used to clean floors. I notice, however, that creating them using crushed dark gems and dark sticks and infusing them with a constant stream of blood, they seem to gain some very interesting qualities. So essentially here, brooms are made of three parts. They're made of uh, broom rods, broom brushes, and broom caps. And if we look in JI here, we go ahead and type in uh, broom, you'll see all of the parts required, the rods, the brushes, and the caps. And depending on which broom rod and, oh, sorry, which rod, brush and cap you use will change the properties of the broom. So for example, with the rods here, if you hold shift over any particular rod, you will see that, for example, the stone rod here has a speed of 50, a maneuverability of 30, and an acceleration of 10 with a sturdiness of 20. Those are the four stats that it has. Uh, if we were to then compare that, for example, to the blaze rod, which I think is probably the rod I'm going to go with, uh, this one has a speed of 250, so it's five times faster than the stone rod, uh, it also has a much higher maneuverability, a much higher acceleration, 10 times as fast, as well as a levitation of 50, a flame of two, and then no sturdiness. So I'm actually not quite sure what uh, flame or lever, oh, sorry, uh, flame or sturdiness do. Levitivity is how fast the broom can accelerate upwards, which if we're going to fight the end dragon is going to be particularly important. But uh, maneuverability is how easily it moves from side to side. Speed, how fast it goes. Acceleration, how fast it can get to its top speed. And then as I mentioned before, I have no idea what the sturdiness or, uh, or flame do. It might mention it in the book, but I don't think it uh, really should matter too, too often. No matter which rod we go for, or brush or metal cap, uh, all of the rods, brushes and metal caps do start out with a bare rod, a bare brush, and a bare metal cap. You then combine the bare version with two of the resource in question, and you get uh, a resource specific version of the rod brush uh, or cap so we will uh, hopefully be able to make these fairly easily let me check how many dark gems we have we have 19 dark gems in here with seven uh, crushed dark gems we also have six more dark ore in here and i will very quickly grab our vengeance pickaxe and break those to get a couple more dark gems just in case the 19 that we have is not enough All right, so let's throw those back in the system here. And then let's see, do we have what it takes to make a bear rod, a bear brush, and a cap? I think that we should do. Uh, let's go ahead and make five of these rods here. Do we already have one rod lying around? Uh, we do not. So we are going to have to make uh, eight sticks there. That is fine. That should then allow us to make a bear rod as well as a bear brush and also a bear cap. So uh, let's go ahead and make the blaze rod version with our blaze rods. So two blaze rods and one stick. Boom, there is the center of our broom. As for the brush, I'm kind of tempted towards the feather brush, which has a levitation of 200. Because again, by default, and I guess we can kind of look at the broom that we already have here. Uh, this one has uh, a blaze rod, a wool brush, uh, a wool brush and an, an emerald gem cap with a levitation of zero plus 150. So uh, if I get on this one right here and we kind of try and fly upwards, it's not too bad, actually. This works quite well. But the, f the f higher the number of levitation, the faster we can kind of ascend upwards. So I'm thinking that uh, we'll probably see at least if we can go with a, uh, a feather brush here. The feather brush, I assume, is just two feathers and the brush. Oh, it's three feathers and the bear brush. That shouldn't be a problem. We do have 39 feathers here from all the chickens uh, that we've acquired over the years. So uh, if we go and grab one of those, 
That then leaves us with the option of the cap. So there are a few caps here, like uh, Emerald and Diamond, that have some good stats, but they do limit the number of modifiers you can put on your broom to two. Whereas I think by default, there are three modifiers. Uh, modifiers essentially giving you a way to increase certain stats, like maneuverability, uh, like levitation, like speed, like acceleration, all that kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to go with the gold cap here. It gives a good balance of all of the uh, other modifiers. Like it gives us extra speed, gives us more sturdiness, gives us more maneuverability. Uh, I quite like the look of this here. And uh, I'm going to assume that the cap is either this or I was going to say all this, but it looks like it's just two gold there. Perfect. And then I think if we just combine all three of these together, one, two, and three, uh, in any shape, by the way, you can do this like however you want, you get a broom. So at this point, if we hold shift, you'll see right now it says modifiers zero out of three. Uh, again, if we look at the uh, previous broom that we have, did this person put modifiers on? Uh, they did not. They had five modifier slots, but they put no modifiers on whatsoever. So we can add modifiers to increase certain stats. For example, uh, if we put on redstone and a redstone block, we get the speed modifier, which gives us plus 10 to speed. I think if we look in the book here, it does mention all of the uh, modifiers. Yeah, so there's speed, acceleration, maneuverability, levitation, damage, particles, flame. Any colliding entity will be lit on fire. I see, okay. Smash, bounce, witherer, hungerer, wither shield, toughness, efficiency, swimming, ice, and then it tells us the modifiers required to, uh, to make those. Before I add any modifiers to the broom, I will go and put uh, some blood into it, which we can, of course, do over in our blood infuser. Between streams, I have spent quite a bit of time in this little cube here. So I grabbed some cobblestone and I kind of built myself into a cube and just went AFK uh, for two reasons. One, because that gets us a lot of blood, which we are going to need a fair bit of today. But then it also spawned in a bunch of wither skeletons because if we look at the fusion reactor here, the recipe for the fusion core requires a nether star. And because we need three fusion cores, that means we're going to need three nether stars. And if we're going to make those like we've been doing up until recently in the chemical combiner, we're going to need a bunch of with the skeleton skulls to make that happen. And uh, thankfully, we do now have 10 with the skeleton skulls ready to go. So that shouldn't be too difficult for us to uh, to do. But either way, if we grab our broom and uh, we jump on it, uh, this one I think has slightly higher levitation. So we do kind of ascend quite a bit faster than the previous broom, which is quite nice. The speed I think is okay. I don't think we need it to be super fast. Again, mostly due to the fact that when we're fighting mobs, just being able to fly around like this is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. Uh, we also get the nice side benefit in that because we have the Obsidian Skull, we can kind of dive right down into the lava here. And unlike in the previous episode, we can actually get down uh, to bedrock fairly quickly with the broom, which is uh, a nice added side benefit, although we don't really need to get down to, uh, to bedrock anymore. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with Levitation for our first modifier here. It's also being recommended to me that I use Slime as one of our modifiers. Uh, this is going to give us the uh, slimy modifier for our broom here, uh, which apparently is going to reduce damage when I uh, collide with, you know, blocks in the world, which again, in the nether is, uh, is probably, oh, sorry, in the end, when we fight the end dragon, is probably going to be quite likely. And uh, we can make the slime ball using the chemical combiner here with uh, two sucrose and two protein. So let me check. Do we have uh, any protein? We do not. Do we have any sucrose? We do not. Now, I think we can get sucrose from sugarcane. And then as for protein, I know we can get it from rotten flesh, which unfortunately uh, we don't have. Where else can I get protein from? Spider eyes, spider webs, any kind of wool, which is interesting. I don't know if we have any string, uh, any kind of meat. In fact, we should have chicken, right? Yeah, we've got 71 chicken right here. So that seems extremely doable. And given that we only need the one slime bowl, uh, just doing, I think, one chicken and one sugar cane might get us there. I think maybe one more sugar cane because I think it was two of each. If we then throw those in over in here, we'll of course lock it to slime, protein, sucrose, and a slime ball. Nice. We'll combine that up like so. And I think for my third and final modifier here, I think I'm just going to go with speed to give us an increased amount of speed to what we currently have. Uh, so for that, once again, we just need redstone and redstone like so. And boom, we have our fully upgraded, for now at least, broom. Okay, so once again, I'm being corrected by the Twitch chat here. I was under the impression that you could only add uh, one modifier total. Um, however, as you can see uh, at the bottom of this kind of stat box here, uh, our speed is at 10 out of 300, our levitation is at 2 out of 300, and our bounty is at 1 out of 30. And you can actually add 
many more of the items used to give you the modifier to increase the stats. So right now, uh, our current levitation is one because we added one feather. If we add another feather, it goes up to two, three, four, five, etc. Um, I don't know if we want to use all of our feathers here. We can use, I think, quite a few of them. Uh, the levitation increase per feather is not particularly high. Uh, we'll go for like 10 for now. We can always add more uh, in the future, should we wish. Uh, but I think we definitely will try and add more speed and more bounciness because we do have a ton of redstone and we can make a bunch of slime fairly easily with our chickens and our sugar. Okay, so now that we have the broom here, back over at the uh, Primordialis Reactor, we're getting close to 200 here. It's coming in pretty quickly. Um, I have just swapped out the carrots because we are now out of carrots. So I've added uh, a new draw for melon seeds, a temporary draw, which is why it's this uh, jungle wood color. But uh, I've quickly crafted some melons into seeds and then they're now added uh, to the reactor to hopefully keep up the speed that we currently have. And of course, if we are going to get the 800 iron ore, as mentioned previously, we need 2000 stone. And as of right now, we have 245 stone, which is not 2000 stone. It's about one tenth of the way there. And so um, I think our best bet here is probably going to be to just make a couple of stone burst seeds and try and make our way up to 2000. Now, if we estimate approximately 40 stone per burst seed, which I think is about right, uh, that would mean we'd need about 45 stone burst seeds in order for that to work, which in turn would be uh, 160 stone in and of itself, but also uh, 40 shards of the sacred land. As of right now, we have 17 shards of the uh, sacred land. However, we do have a bunch of crystal blocks. However, I'm not convinced necessarily that's going to be enough to get us up to 40. I will break a few of these here. And then if we don't get enough, I think what we can do is just make a few more crystal burst seeds as well uh, to increase the number we have there. And um, of course, I do have to remember that we craft these down first before we crush them. And uh, that got us an extra 13, which does take us fairly close. That puts us closer to uh, 30. Actually, bang on 30. Uh, but we do still need approximately 15 more. So what I think I will do here is I think I will make a few more uh, crystal burst seeds. And then once we have enough shard of the sacred, uh, enough shards of the sacred land, I think then we'll start looking at making all of the uh, stone burst seeds. Actually, hold on. We do have 8,400 silicon dioxide and you can make one stone with one silicon dioxide. So instead, chat, I think what I'm going to do, instead of being foolish, <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, grab a draw. And it really doesn't matter which draw we go with. This draw here can hold uh, 2,048 stone. Uh, it's just going to split it between these four options here. Uh, if we temporarily pick this up, swap this guy over here to stone, and then just pipe stone in from the top, that should hopefully much more quickly than the burst seeds make us 2,000 stone. All we have to do is just move 2,000 silicon dioxide over into that top draw. And that's probably a lot faster, eh? Just make sure that's set to extract. Yeah, that's probably much quicker. So we're over 200 here, which is perfect. Uh, so I will go ahead and just take this off for now. Uh, and we might as well use our uh, wrench for that because it is much, much faster. But now, basically, we need to move, at the very least, the uh, energy on error heater uh, back over to the atomic reshaper. And then we need to start pumping both stone and primordium into that... Uh, reshaper to start making iron ore so i'll put the primordium in and i guess we'll probably also go ahead and put the uh stone in eh? we don't currently have all of the stone uh, it is still being made slowly but surely over here we're currently at uh, 300 uh, almost 400 i guess actually but so we can begin at least moving some of the stone over into this hopper and hopefully slowly but surely start making some iron ore here okay so once we have enough stone right now we have 1800 stone in here we can go ahead and grab that and I guess we can also, uh, I was going to say turn this guy off, but for now we can leave that running. Uh, if we put down these drawers over here, like so, and I think for now I'll also go ahead and move this speedy hopper as well, which is going to give me a bunch of silicon dioxide, but that's kind of fine. Uh, the speedy hopper here, of course, is going to be for the primordium, which I'm hoping we can also auto feed into here. I assume we can. Right now we've got 19. If I were to grab the remaining primordium, does that make its way in? It totally does. Nice. So yeah, we can leave this running. 
after some calculations, this is going to take about four hours to actually complete. And so unfortunately, it does look like we're not going to get the fusion reactor built today. But uh, we can, of course, take a look at making some of the other items required. Uh, but we're not going to be able to get the uh, 108 fusion casing because we're not going to be able to get uh, enough tungsten. However, what we can do is we can pivot over and take a look at fighting the Pharaoh here. My original plan was, of course, to fight the End Dragon first, then get the better armor, then fight these three guys, the uh, Pharaoh, the Spirit Guardian, and the Gaia. However, we can mix this up a little bit and try and fight the Pharaoh first. To do that, all we'd have to do is get a fairly decent sword and hopefully some decent armor. So as I mentioned previously, the first piece of armor, or the first set of armor, that I'm looking to make is the Soul Steel armor. I think this is probably the best armor that we can currently make with the resources that we have. And thankfully, it's not too difficult to make. It's made with Soul Dust, which you make from Soul Sand, uh, as well as Crystal Catalysts, which are made from all the crystals that we just acquired. And then Metal Diamonds, which we have made before. These are made with the Sentient Core and the Block of Diamond. So if we're going to get 24 Soul Steel ingots, which is what we need to make a full set of armor here, we currently have two, so we only need 22 here. However, they are made uh, in sets of four, so we're going to have to do six lots of what we have here, which means 24 metal diamond ingots, 24 soul dust, and uh, six crystal catalysts. The six crystal catalysts, I think, are going to be by far the easiest part here. Uh, we do need some more nether crystals. However, we did just get some more crystal blocks from the crystal burst seed, and so uh, we can very easily throw these crystals through the portal and uh, get yet more nether crystals, and so getting the remainder of the crystal catalysts here really shouldn't be too difficult. Good stuff. From there, we're going to need three metal diamond blocks because you get nine per time, uh, which means we need three diamond blocks and three sentient cores. Uh, thankfully, the sentient cores are made in sets of four. Uh, we do only have two, but unfortunately, we do need three, and so we are going to have to make a new set of four here. Again, thankfully, they're fairly easy to make. And diamond block-wise, we do have 161 diamonds, as well as uh, 86 pristine diamonds. And as we've shown before, you can craft uh, pristine gems into the regular block version uh, of that gem. So we can get three diamond blocks there nice and easily. And so, yeah, I don't think getting this here should be too, too difficult. So sentient core, diamond block, shard of the sacred land. And all we have to do is wait. So a little while later, we now have four blocks of metal diamond, which is more than we needed, but that's also fine. That's because we had more sentient cores than we needed. And at that point, I think we're pretty much there, right? We might need more soul dust. Yeah, we do need a little bit more soul dust. However, we do already have the soul sand required. And given that you get four soul dust per soul sand here, we actually only need like three more soul sand to get all the soul dust required. And at that point, we should be pretty much good to go. We'll take all of these. We'll begin smelting them up over in here. And 24 soul steel ingots later, and we should be pretty much good to go on making a soul steel chest plate, some soul steel leggings, a soul steel helmet, and some soul steel boots. Nice. That combined with all of the extra hearts that we get from eating a variety of foods, should give us a pretty good chance here. Between streams, I have been taking uh, the generous food that was given to me by uh, a member of the Patreon server. I have been slowly but surely making my way through these uh, foods here so that uh, hopefully uh, we have enough hearts to actually fight the Pharaoh. And now the final piece of the puzzle, of course, is the weapon that we're going to use. Right now, we've got a diamond sword, and that's what I've been using up until this point. However, uh, a quick look through JI here. I think the best sword available to us is the end forged sword here from Calculator. There are quite a few uh, swords from Calculator, uh, but this one has uh, an attack speed of 1.6 and an attack damage of 20 uh, as compared to the Diamond Sword, which has an attack speed of 7. Uh, other swords that I was looking at were the Terra Steel Blade, which is this one, uh, but that's also just 7, uh, which is not particularly good. Uh, even the stuff from Forbidden and Arcanus, like the uh, Draco Arcanus Sword, only has an attack damage of 11. So the End Forged Sword is probably where we're going to go. And thankfully, it's actually pretty easy to make. It's one stick and then two end diamonds. And as you'll know, if you've watched the streams before, we've made a bunch of end diamonds. It is quite simply an end stone. In this case, we're going to take two, two electric diamonds and two obsidian. Throw all those together in the atomic calculator. One, two, and three. And that gets us two end diamonds, which we can then go ahead and craft with a regular old Minecraft stick. And we get the end forged sword so on its own here 
This might actually be good enough just to fight the Pharaoh as is. 20 is already uh, quite a high attack damage. However, uh, there are ways that we can make this even better through enchantments. So I don't know if we can enchant this directly. I assume we could just in a regular enchantment table with bookshelves. However, if we get a Zora Steel Sword here, which I will bookmark temporarily, we can then use what is known as the Zora Altar to add enchants to that Zora Steel Sword, which we could then move to the Calculator Sword through the power of evil craft. And the reason we'd want to do this is the Zora Altar is actually pretty good at applying and upgrading enchantments uh, to the Zora Steel Sword. It doesn't require bookshelves, and I think it might also be a little bit cheaper. So to make either of these, we do need more Zora Steel ingots. Thankfully, now that we have the scientific calculator, we can do that with raw Zora Steel ingots and energy on dust, and the raw Zora Steel ingots are made with Zora leaves and iron. Of course, we get the Zora leaves from Zora saplings, which we have, and uh, thankfully we'd already have quite a few Zora leaves ready to go here. We might have to get a few more of them because the Zora leaves are also used in the Zora altar. But uh, for now, though, if we get the eight uh, raw Zora steel ingots we're going to need here, along with eight energy on dust, and that does remind me that we should probably put some more energy on dust, yeah, into that arrow heater, which has indeed uh, turned itself off. But uh, real quick, if we do uh, that, that gets us the eight Zora steel. Let's also go and do this. It might be worth setting up a hopper down here to, uh, to keep pumping uh, energy on in as well to make sure that it keeps going between streams, but I'll figure that out in the future. Oh, so as a reward for the first Zora Steel ingot that we handed in, we got the Zora Steel altar. So uh, I did make too much Zora Steel here. That's not really uh, too big of a deal. We'll quickly whip up the sword. And so if I go ahead and plop this guy down, let's say right about here, and we look inside, we'll see like a traditional Minecraft enchanting interface, but uh, this time around we need uh, Zora leaves as opposed to lapis. So let's go grab a stack of Zora leaves here or as many as we have. And if we look in here, this altar here offers three options to us. The first option gives us an enchant. In this case, it's Bane of the Arthropods. And for three levels, we can get Bane of the Arthropods 1 onto our sword. Not particularly interesting. I don't think we really need Bane of the Arthropods. The second one here will increase a stat that's already on the sword. In this case, it's showing plus one sharpness. And then if we were to give it plus one sharpness, it would then offer sharpness 2, sharpness 3, sharpness 4. Uh, so this middle one always gives you an increase to a enchantment that you already have, I believe. And then the third option here gives you a random enchant. It's quite cheap. So this, it, for example, only costs one and thus is very cheap, but we'll give you a random enchant. So we could get Fortune, we could get Bane of the Arthropods, Sharpness, Smite, whatever enchant it is. I'm going to click this middle option here because that gives us Sharpness and Sharpness is what we're after. And as you can see now, we can upgrade to Sharpness 2 by clicking the middle one again. And we could do it again in Sharpness 3. Uh, each time, the top one changes uh, for the new option. And the random one also changes. But for now, I really just think that we're after Sharpness 5. Once we have Sharpness 5, we then need to move that Sharpness over to our Endforge Sword. Because that's where we want to move the extra attack damage to. And that is where our good old friend, the Bluck, comes in. Uh, I didn't say that wrong. That is a blood book from Evilcraft. And is made by putting a regular book, uh, a regular book into the altar. Uh, let's have a look. Do we have a regular book lying around? We do not. And I'm going to assume that we also don't have what it takes to make a regular book. Oh, we do. Look at that. So if we go and throw that into our blood infuser here, that's going to get us a book. Good stuff. And then once we have this, we then need to get ourselves this guy right here, the purifier. And this is what's going to allow us to strip the enchantment off of our sword and into that block. So to make the purifier, we need a block of dark gems, as well as four more dark gems, a blood infused core, which is a dark power gem surrounded by hardened blood shards with yet more hardened blood shards here. So we need quite a lot of this hardened blood. Uh, thankfully, we do have a good amount of hardened blood and we also do have a drying basin that we can use here. So a couple of hardened blood blocks later, we can go and begin smelting those over in here. Uh, we do need one of them, right? Also, we do need to get rid of that wither skeleton who has spawned on the wrong part of our spawner. We should really look at making our spawner bigger <laughs> if we want to prevent these things from happening uh, because you'll see that sometimes they do spawn on the walls. I think if I was to make the platform one wider, so a 13 by 13 instead of an 11 by 11, uh, that all the wither skeletons would spawn on vector plates. That's uh, probably something we should look into. Uh, either way, back over here, 
Uh, do we have enough dark gems? I think we do. Even if we didn't, we are, of course, making more dark gem ore over here. Yeah, we've got 10 more dark gem ore over there. So even if we didn't have enough, uh, we would be good to go. But uh, I think we should be pretty much good to go here. Uh, we are going to have to get a dark power gem, which thankfully now we can do in our blood infuser. No longer do we have to get five buckets down on the floor. We can just throw you in like so. Once we have the dark power gem, and once we grab the blood shards there, I think we should be pretty much good to go. So do we have what it takes to make a call? We do. And from there, we just need to get everything into the system. And boom, we have a purifier. So the way this works, if I'm not mistaken, is we place down the purifier. In this case, I'll put it down, let's say right here. We can then place in the block. That's going to receive the enchantment. We then need to fill this with three buckets of blood, which is the maximum that it can hold. So one, two, and three. And then from there, if we put in our Zora Steel Sword, that should keep the sword, but extract the enchantment. So now we can pull out our sword, good as new, and we can also grab a Sharpless 5 book. Nice. So from there, all we have to do is grab a regular old Minecraft anvil, like so. And then uh, for now, we'll throw you down over here. And then if we combine up our Endforge Sword with our Sharpless 5, we get an Endforged Sword with Shadow 5 and an attack damage of 23. We'll call this pretty powerful. So I think with our set of Soul Steel Armor and our Endforged Sword here, we should probably be able to fight the Pharaoh. The trickiest part, I think, about getting uh, about fighting the Pharaoh is going to be finding uh, the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh can be a bit of a pain to, uh, to track down. Uh, so I'm going to empty my inventory a little bit here. And I'm also going to grab four Royal Torches because I believe we need these in order to actually activate the Pharaoh fight. So let's head on through to the Atom Dimension. So once we're here, we're looking for a pyramid, which is probably easiest found on the minimap. But essentially, we're going to do a bit of flying around here and try and find the Pyramid of the Pharaoh. Okay, so this is the pyramid that we're after. We need to uh, to dismount. We need to uh, maybe deal with these ghosts. Thankfully, the uh, salt that we have is pretty good. And also, another benefit of this salt here, it's unbreakable. It doesn't take any, any damage, which is super nice. So I believe here we have to look for like a specific entranceway to the pyramid. So one of the four sides will be the entrance. And I think it's pretty obvious which one it is. I think it might be this one right here, actually. Yeah, we maybe could have done with bringing some uh, regular Minecraft torches, but uh, yeah, in fact, you know what? Let's do a quick slash home and let's grab some regular torches here. We can then do slash back. And now we can uh, throw these down as we make our way through the pyramid. I will take a few things here because I think we might need some of them. I don't want to take too much stuff. I also don't think the armor is going to be particularly useful for us. But uh, for example, I know the final quest in chapter five here does require. Uh, oh, sorry. I know the. Is it not the Spirit Guardian? Oh, here it is. I know this quest here for the uh, Spawn Greater Sprite does require a dirty coin, which I don't know if we're going to find one in here, but I think we might find one. I think we might get those from fighting certain guys outside. But just in case, I will take some stuff here. Uh, also, the dusty bones. I think those might be needed as well. Yeah, we need to get a, a dirty bone block, which you get from nine dusty bones. So we need to grab those as we go as well. But uh, we want to head down. And now we enter, like, the maze portion of the pyramid, which I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of mazes <laughs> in general. Uh, we do, though, want to keep an eye out and probably want to keep our pickaxe handy for traps, which we will find from time to time on the way around. I think whenever we find uh, a ladder that goes down, we want to take it. Traps look like this, or this is a type of trap. If you just left click, or sorry, right click, that will diffuse the trap. Those traps can also appear 
on walls as well, like that, and also like this. Uh, but I think we're actually also I yeah keep out of the way of that that guy. Uh, but I think we are possibly on the right level here already. So this is what we're after right here. This is the Pharaoh room. And I'm fairly certain all we have to do to activate this fight is place down the four royal torches around the sarcophagus. So here, 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 and here. And then right click. Okay, so someone's already been here. Which is why there were blocks here. And also why there were no mobs on the way down. That makes a tremendous amount of sense. Which is unfortunate. But it does mean that we are going to have to go find another pyramid. This one looks a lot more promising because this one doesn't have the entrance way dug out. Like the last one, we could see the entrance uh, from the surface, whereas this one we can't. So I'm a bit more confident that this one has what we're after. Okay, so here is the entrance. Unlike the last time we were here, I think there were going to be mobs inside. Yeah. So this, I was a little confused last time as to how easy it was. Now it makes a lot, uh, a lot of sense. Uh, okay, we might have to kill some of these forsaken before we can press on. Okay, and we definitely want to try if we can and get rid of these spawners. Yeah, that's going to make life a whole lot easier. We might even be able to uh, kind of just lure them outside. Like, they do appear to kind of follow me quite a bit. If you guys just want to follow me, single file, out of the... Uh, out of the pyramid. I'll make room here. Come on, guys. Single file. There we go. Just one one at a time. Single file. Out, out of the pyramid. That would be grand. It appears they're just a little too tall to make their way out of the door. If nothing else, though, the last pyramid did give us a, uh, a decent idea as to like what the pyramid layout is like. So now we need to do the exact same thing again. This time there are probably going to be more traps, like this right here, that you want to take care of, especially when turning a corner. The pyramid loves to put them down on corners to try and kind of get you. Okay, so here's the room again. This time it makes a lot more sense because there is already one royal torch down, which is kind of what I was expecting. I am contemplating kind of stealing the idea that... Uh, the last person had and maybe using some of our cracked limestone here not the uh the sand to maybe form like a bit of a blockade because we have done this before we did it in the uh, the antimatter chemistry series and from the best of my knowledge i don't know if, if we come back here we might be able to kind of just hit him through the through the hole so if i right click here the pharaoh turns over in their sarcophagus oh we have to replace this one of course there we go if i right click and i do that can i somewhat cowardly fight the guy through this little hole in the wall here. I mean, it's not quite the uh, the epic, you know, mod pack ending fight that, that the, the pack author probably had in mind, um, but it does work surprisingly well. And uh, this guy is pretty much uh, dead. And there is our... Perfect. This is what we need in order to uh, complete the Volcano Master quest at the very end of the mod pack here. And that is uh, yet another quest in Chapter 5 complete. Uh, we can now do a quick slash home. Check up on our uh, stone here, which is getting there. We've got 1,400 stone left to go. So between streams chat, I will uh, probably have to replace this chest or uh, move the chest and add like another chest. I think I'll probably look at getting some more... Uh, drawers and maybe connecting this up in some way so we can actually start storing uh, all of the ores more efficiently and so I don't have to keep breaking the chest or keep moving items out of the chest. Uh, we will keep uh, filling this up with energy on. Uh, chat has reminded me actually that I can uh, loot the sarcophagus which I definitely uh, will do here. There is stuff in here that we might need. There is a totem of undying, some more strange sand, some more coins, two dates, a Ra's fury which I guess maybe we could use to fight the uh, end dragon potentially uh, as well as some other stuff which we can go ahead and take because why not? But yeah, between streams, I will continue to get uh, this going. Uh, so hopefully next time, when we come back, we will have the 800 iron ore required to get the 1,600 tungsten required uh, to build the fusion reactor, get this ingot here. And by get that, I mean get eight of those ingots because then we can use those to make the end cake, fight the end dragon, uh, get ourselves hopefully some better armor, and then look at fighting the Gaia, the Sprite Guardian, and maybe getting the steel donuts as well. 
But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.